Hi, I'm Ty Whitman, the Water Sifu, and I'd like to welcome you back to part two in this kind of little mini-series we have that's kind of meant to go along as a companion to the two math DVDs. The first water math DVD where we cover basic stuff, and the second water math DVD where we cover the advanced stuff. This is like a little two-part bonus feature. In the first part of this, we cover the subjects of specific capacity and detention time. In this one, we're going to cover the subjects of surface loading or overflow rate and the unit filter run volume. Both of those relate to kind of the treatment end of things. Let's go ahead and hop right in with the surface loading and the surface overflow rate. First off, to just kind of explain what it is we're working on here, the surface loading or the overflow rate is basically a measure of the amount of water leaving the sedimentation basin per square foot of surface area. It relates to the settling rate of the particles within that basin and the overall effectiveness of the whole process. Operating in excess of this design loading rate will not filter out all the particles and will put excess burden on the filter beds. The reason why I'm doing this stuff extra, I already kind of explained it in the first part of this if you're seeing it, but just in case you didn't see that first part, there were a couple things I really kind of felt later on that in the way of making this site an over-encompassing site, I wanted to cover these last four things. And I didn't put them on the DVDs because they're kind of basic formula things, but I do feel like solving them here and showing you how to go ahead and do these. Surface loading rate is basically a formula. The flow in gallons per minute divided by the surface area in square feet. Like I said in the last one, if you've seen the DVDs, basically what happens is there's a little booklet that goes out with them, and I would have these problems on that booklet, so you'd have that to actually kind of read through and work through it with me here together. Um, I can't send that through the camera to your homes through the computer, so I'm going to read these things out, and I'm going to read them kind of as slow as I can and repeat myself. A sedimentation basin is 100 feet long, 50 feet wide, and 20 feet deep. What is the surface overflow rate if the influent flow is 5.4 million gallons per day? Well, there's two things we have to get out of this. One, we have to get our flow in gallons per minute, and the other one is we have to get our surface area in square feet. I did something with this problem that you'll see a lot on the test just to kind of get you used to that. I gave you a little more information than you need. The square foot, let's work on that, is basically just length times the width. Okay, so to get your square footage, it's length times the width. If you would want the cubic feet, you would add the depth. This problem just wants the square footage. And the question tells you a sedimentation basin is 100 feet long times 50 feet wide times 20 feet deep. We don't need the 20 feet. So to solve for surface area, it's length times width, 100 times 50. We're going to have a surface area of 5,000 square feet. Now, to solve this, we have to get our flow in gallons per minute. The question says, what is the surface overflow rate if the influent flow is 5.4 million gallons per day? If you've seen the beginning math DVD, you're very familiar with how to convert million gallons per day per gallons per minute. In case you have not done that, let's go over that. Although in the interest of time, I'm going to have to do it just a little quicker than I would like to. We have 5.4 million gallons. So 5 million 400,000 gallons. Okay, 5.4 times 1 million, 5,400,000 5, gallons. Now we want to convert that to minutes, because it's right now it's gallons per day, 5,400,000 gallons per day. So you divide by 24, because there are 24 hours in a day, and that would convert it to hours, but we don't want hours, we want minutes. So then you would divide it again by 60 minutes 
in each hour. So you take 5,400,000 divided by 24 hours, divide it again by 60 minutes, and that'll give you a flow in minutes of 3,750 gallons per minute. So now we have the two things that we need to solve the problem. Surface loading rate equals our flow in gallons per minute divided by our surface area in square feet. Our flow in gallons per minute is 3,750. Our surface area in square feet is 5,000. So you take you take your 3,750 Divide it by your 5,000 and you would get your answer, which is 0.75 gallons per minute per square foot. Surface loading rate. Flow divided by surface area. Flow, we're converting a million gallons a day down to gallons per minute. Surface area, length times the width, and you get your square feet. Divide your flow by your surface area and you get your answer, 0.75 gallons per minute per square foot. One other subject I want to cover is pretty much just a very simple formula, but I do want you to see it in case you ever see it on a test, you know how to solve it. Like I was saying, I want my site to be that one-stop place that you can go to to get all that information that you need so I decided this was kind of important to add. That's why I'm adding these four things, even though they are basically the application of formulas and kind of easy to self-teach. I want to show everything to you here. Unit filter run volume. Unit filter run volume, it relates to the effectiveness of the filter beds. Okay, so it kind of tells you how, you fil how effective your filter process is. And basically what it is, is it's a total gallons produced in a filter run per square foot of filter area. The formula for the unit filter run volume, and I'll abbreviate it UFRV, equals total gallons produced in a filter run by a filter run, that means between backwashes. Okay, when a filter runs into you, backwash that filter bed, clean all the stuff out of it, and then return it to surface. Service, excuse me. So once that gets returned to surface, service, what's stuck with the surface? I got staying too much surface stuff here. Okay, once it's returned to service, then until that next backwash happens, that's called your filter run. So total gallons produced in a filter run between the backwashing divided by square feet of the filter area, the top of that media surface. So let's do a quick question here. A filter bed <clears throat> produces three million gallons a day between backwashes. If the filter is 25 by 25, what is the unit filter run volume in gallons per square feet? Okay, total gallons produced in a filter run. The question already tells us right that there. Three million. It produces three million gallons between backwashes. If the filter is 25 by 25, what is the unit filter run volume? So the filter is 25 by 25. We want our square feet total the filter. So length times width, 25 times 25 is going to equal 625 square feet of filter area 625 and it's just a real simple formula you plug those two things in and you divide 3 million divided by 625 and that's going to equal 4800 gallons per square foot of media surface area that's the unit filter run volume. So that pretty much wraps up the four subjects that I wanted to cover in this kind of bonus area. 
I want to follow that up real quick because there's a lot of information on these four easy subjects. I want to make sure you all are aware, again, you know how big I am on flashcards. Everything you've seen here should be on a flashcard if you want to study this stuff. These formulas, put them on flashcards and memorize them. The problems that we've done, kind of write them out on flashcards with the problem on the front and how to solve it on the back for all of these things. Even the terms like um, static water level that we did in the last one, pumping water level and drawdown when we were talking about specific capacity in the first part of this, put it on a flashcard, okay? And so do that, review these and beat them into the head and you'll be fine. So I'm glad I got to go over this stuff with you and we will catch you later. Thanks a lot. Oh, I should say while I'm doing this that in case you're seeing these and you haven't seen the math DVDs, go to the website waterseafood.com. Water, you know what, forget it. I'm putting this on, I'll just put it on the screen. Waterseafood.com, you'll be able to check out the math DVDs there. Have a good day.